This is proof that I can enjoy Romanticia when it's well written. I am loving this <laughs> so much. I feel like Carissa Broadbent has a plan for this series. It is finally time to read one of my most anticipated releases for the second half of this year, and that is The Songbird and the Heart of Stone by Carissa Broadbent. So for anyone who doesn't know, this is the third book in the Crowns of Nyaxia world. However, it is also the start of a new duology, so I am going to be keeping this read and vlog spoiler free for this book. I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to keep things spoiler free for the rest of the series. I think it really depends on what you would consider a spoiler because you could argue that me telling you the name of the main character in this book is a spoiler because then you know that they survive the first two books but then I also know that some people don't care about that sort of stuff. I don't know why you would want to watch this vlog anyway if you haven't read the first two books but I just wanted to clarify that I didn't end up talking about what I thought I might end up talking about. I thought I might have to talk about the main character's backstory and stuff that's revealed about them in the first duology, but I didn't end up doing that. So yeah, just wanted to clarify that if you haven't read the first two books, then you're probably fine to watch this. But also, I don't know why you would want to do that. Just go and read the first two books because they're amazing. <laughs> anyway, back to the vlog. The first book is Serpent and the Wings of Night and the sequel is Ashes and the Star-Cursed King. If you are also excited for this book, then I'm really excited to share my thoughts thoughts and reactions in this vlog. So I made a start on this last night. I am at the end of part one. So I think there are five parts in total, which is something that I liked about the first book. I liked how Serpent in the Wings of Night was structured around these various trials. And I feel like this is going to be structured around, not trials, but I think there is going to be a structure to this. As a very, very brief synopsis, we are following Misha, who is a side character from the first two books. I was pronouncing her name wrong. <laughs> That's one of the first things I realised when I picked this up is there's a part where she explains how to pronounce her name or someone pronounces her name to her. And yeah, her name is pronounced Misha, which I should have known because my friend used to have a cat or her flatmate used to have a cat called Misha and it was spelt the same way that Misha's name is spelt in this series. So yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> but in this, we are following Misha and and the plot for this is going to involve a quest which will take her to hell. Misha was one of my favourite characters in the first two books, so I was very excited when I found out that this duology was going to be following her story. I loved her friendship with Araya and Rain, so I will be interested to see how much of an appearance they make in this book. I think at this point we have already met who is going to be the love interest, I am assuming, and he is also very interesting intriguing. I love how intriguing this series is as a whole. I love the world and how it feels like there's so much to learn. I like how each duology in this series is going to follow a different vampire house, so this particular duology is going to focus on the House of Shadow, and I think their magic is very interesting. As a quick recap, it's more to do with mind control or reading minds or anything to do with the mind. I think there's also going to be a focus on faith and religion in this, and specifically how the gods interact with vampires and humans which is something that was explored in the novella Six Cursed Roses. Is that what it's called? I have forgotten. I think that was the name of the novella. I really loved that novella, not just because of the romance, but because of the way that it explored more of the religious elements to this world. So yeah, I will hopefully check in with you once I finished the next part. Like I said, there's five parts in total, so I think it makes sense to do updates at the end of each part and just let you know my reactions, let you know what I'm feeling, but so far I am really enjoying this. It has been a little bit of a slow start, but also I think in some ways it has thrown you straight into the plot, so you know what direction it's going to go in, and yeah, I'm really excited. I have reached the end of part two in The Songbird and the Heart of Stone, which means I'm around a third of the way through, and this is going to be a really quick update, because first of all I'm struggling to get my words out, but also I am loving this book so much I don't want to 
I have to pause to talk to the camera to explain how much I'm enjoying it, but I am gonna do that. I am gonna try and put some thoughts into words. This is proof that I can enjoy romanticy when it's well written. I have been really struggling with romanticy this year, and part of me thinks maybe it's because I read Serpent and the Wings of Night and Ashes and the Star Cursed King right at the start of the year in January and February. So everything else that I've read since then just hasn't hit me as hard. There's something about Carissa Broadbent's writing that just works for me. I think she writes with this intensity that I love. Her books are kind of dark, but the world is so fascinating. I love how intricate it feels and how there's all of these different elements to the world. We have obviously vampires, but also there's a religious system and a political system. The plot could stand by itself even without the romance. However, what I like about the plot is that it's very clear what's happening. It's there to further the relationship. So the two main characters and also some side characters are going on this journey to the underworld. There's different stages that they have to pass through during their descent and it's clear that the challenges that they're having to overcome is building the relationship and it's building this authentic connection between them and it feels realistic and I feel invested and I haven't been this excited about a romancy all year. Since I read Ashes and the Star Cursed King I haven't felt this excited about a fantasy romance and yeah I love it. I love Misha as a character. I think she is so complex and she has this inner turmoil and this conflict inside of herself. It's all because of reasons that you learn in the first couple of books but she feels torn between two gods and I'm really interested to see how that develops as the book goes on. The dynamic between Misha and the love interest who I think his name is pronounced Asar or Asar, their dynamic feels very different to Araya and Rain from the first two books and I like that. It feels fresh and exciting and not like I'm just reading the same book over again. There's a couple of new side characters that we've also been introduced to and I am interested to see their backstories, if we get their backstories. One character in particular I am very intrigued about. There's also an animal companion and we know how much I love the animal companion trope. So this is going really well so far. I am just honestly relieved that I'm enjoying this as much as I am. Please excuse my wet hair. I am just settling down for the evening but I thought I would check in with you first because I am almost halfway through The Songbird and the Heart of Stone and I'm still really enjoying it. I need to grab my notes actually because it's quite late in the evening and my brain is not quite working. <laughs> this book reminds me of another book. I can't work out what it reminds me of. I feel like it might be Sabriel by Garth Nix because it has a necromancy element and also the certain other things which I think are reminding me of it. I haven't read Sabriel since I was a teenager so I could be completely wrong but this is reminding reminding me of something and I think that's what it's reminding me of. It's also quite dark. There are content warnings in the beginning just in case you need them which I always love to see. Even if I don't feel like I need them it's always nice to know that they are there. There seems to be less banter in this book in comparison to the previous books. I still do like the way that the romance is developing but it feels like the relationship is being built on this mutual understanding of what the other person has been through rather than instant chemistry. We are learning more about Misha's past which has been interesting. I do have a few predictions as to what direction I think this is going in and certain things that I think are going to be either revealed or that are going to happen in the second half and I really hope I'm wrong. Even if I am right on certain things I'm really hoping that this does have some twists and turns because that's always more fun but yeah I'm still enjoying this. The stakes in this also feel like they should be higher than what I'm actually feeling. In. so I'm also hoping that that is something that's also going to build in this second half. It has been a busy few days but I have been making some good progress with The Songbird and The Heart of Stone. I am roughly two-thirds of the way through. I haven't checked the exact page number. I was going to update you at the end of each part because there's five or six parts but I feel like that's a little too often <laughs> so this may be my last update before I get to the end and I am loving this <laughs> so much. It's been so long since I last read a proper slow burn romance that this just feels so great. <laughs> it's such a relief to be reading something that is structurally what I enjoy reading. And I love a slow burn romance. I don't want insta love. I want to see the characters gradually fall for each other and the romantic tension in the 
this second half has been built in so well. There's been some really fun banter, but there's also been some emotional moments. I feel like this is really well paced. There hasn't yet been a dull moment, but there has also been time for us to see the characters slow down and interact and have a conversation. And it's so satisfying. It's flowing really well. It's putting a huge smile on my face. And I know I said in my last update that I was concerned that I'd worked everything out in this book and I knew what direction it was going to go in. I don't know whether I have worked everything out because there's been a few surprises <laughs> in this last section. Some stuff has happened that I wasn't expecting. So it's keeping my attention. It's keeping me invested. I want to keep on reading to find out how things are going to wrap up. Obviously, this is only part one. So I don't know how this is going to end. Are we going to have a cliffhanger? I'm assuming so. I do understand why this is told in single POV. However, the way that it worked with the last series is the first book was told in single POV and then the second book was dual POV and I really hope that happens with this book. Well, not this book, with this series. This book is definitely only going to be told in single POV. However, I need to get inside this guy's head. When you first meet him, he is very mysterious. However, as you get to know him, all of these layers develop and there's a real theme in this around redemption and guilt and feeling like you have to make amends for things that you've done in your past, even though there may have been reasons why you've done things in the past. Both of these characters feel very layered and I'm really appreciating learning more about Misha as well. I love how these characters aren't perfect, even though Misha, we already know, has a very altruistic nature and she loves caring for people and helping people. It's been really interesting seeing her character development, but I do want to get inside Asar's head. So I'm really hoping the second book in this series does have a second perspective perspective. There have been some small conveniences within the plot where it's felt like things have been a little contrived. However, I'm willing to overlook that because I'm just having so much fun with this book. I'm trying not to look too much into it and just relax and enjoy the journey. Some of the imagery in this has been very interesting. I am someone who pictures stuff as they read and I haven't struggled to picture stuff as I'm reading this. It's just that what I'm picturing feels very weird. <laughs> for example, stuff has been described as being supersized. And in my brain, I'm thinking, is it meant to be this big? Because that's how it's describing it. It just doesn't feel like it's right, but I'm assuming it is right. It's just been a very interesting experience, but it's been a very immersive experience. So I am hoping to blast through the rest of this tonight, and then I can update you with my final thoughts. But so far, this has given me four or five star feelings. I feel like I should give it five stars if I do enjoy the ending. I hope it's sticks the land in. But this reminds me of a book I read recently called The Half King by Melissa Landers. Not in every element, but just in terms of the religious element. However, I feel like this is delivering it better and with more emotion. And so it's going to stick with me long term and it's given me that five star feeling. So yeah, I will finish this hopefully tonight and then I will check in with you once I've reached the end. Unless something happens before I get to the end and I want to update you with my reaction. But yeah, very much enjoying this and I can't wait to see how everything wraps up. I don't know if I'm ready to talk about this book yet, but I finished reading The Songbird and the Heart of Stone last night and I'm giving it five stars. I have to give it five stars based on that ending, which I was not expecting. And I literally finished this book and just sat and stared into the void for a full five minutes because I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. I loved this book and yeah, if I put it under a microscope and really analysed it, it does have its issues. Objectively, you know, there are some issues with this. It's not perfect. It has some plot conveniences and I never really felt the tension in the plot. All the tension I was feeling came from the romance, which I'm fine with. I can overlook plot issues in a fantasy romance or a romanticy as long as I feel invested in the romance. And I felt invested in this romance. I am so excited. <laughs> to continue this series. When is the second book coming out? I'm assuming it's going to be next year, which I don't want to have to wait. This is the thing, is when I read Serpent and the Wings of Night, I could immediately go into Ashes and the Starcursed King because I'd waited for them both to be released, but I have to wait with this one and I don't know if I can. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to have to. If you enjoyed the first two books, then I think there's a really good chance that you're going to love this one too. I feel like Carissa Broadbent has a plan for this series. Obviously, at the end of this book, 
we are halfway through the series because there's going to be six books I believe in total plus the novella and I don't know if there's going to be some other spin-offs and other novellas. I still haven't read is it Slaying the Vampire Conqueror which I know is a standalone set within this world. I need to read it because I need more of Carissa Broadbent's writing. I also need to read her other series. I have heard that that one is more fantasy with romance but I've also heard people say that this is fantasy with romance. This in my opinion is what romanticy should be or it's what I love about romanticy because yes there is a really compelling and addictive plot and the characters go through it. This is dark but everything that they go through it's there to further the relationship and the relationship is in my opinion the best thing about this book. So yeah five stars and I am just so happy that I loved this. I also didn't have a problem getting into this as well considering it's been not quite a year since I read the first two books. I read them in January and February so around nine or ten months I didn't have a problem getting back into this. I usually have a terrible memory so I have to continue series quite quickly. I feel like this is separate enough from the first series with a few crossovers that you wouldn't struggle to get back into this if you don't have time to reread the first two books. I am going to wrap up this vlog here though so thank you for watching if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you are excited for this book or if you've read it yet. I think I am going to schedule this vlog to go out during release week. It comes out in November. I'm not sure on the exact date but it will either be out by the time this vlog goes live or it will be coming out within the next few days. So yeah let me know if you are excited for this book. My mind has gone so I am gonna wrap things up here don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time bye <laughs>